Hey guys, Alex here, and I'm gonna make a vlog for you guys talking about my thoughts on the new 300 Rise of an Empire movie. Um, I'm not gonna do a proper movie review, but I'm gonna tell you, you know, what my thoughts were on this movie, whether I liked it or not, and I'm gonna talk about some of the historical discrepancies in the movie, because this movie is based on historical events. Um, that said, this movie is based on a graphic novel by Frank Miller, so it's based on a comic book, which in turn is based on historical events. So, uh, let me start off by saying, yeah, I had the pleasure of watching this movie last night on Friday, March 7, 2014. I watched it in 3D, and it actually opened on Thursday, but I was, I was busy on Thursday. What was I doing? Oh yeah, I was watching the new Viking episode on History Channel, which by the way is a great show. Uh, sidetracked. So yeah, 300 Rise of an Empire, it's, it's the sequel to the first movie called 300, and that starred Gerard Butler focusing on the Battle of Thermopylae. 300 Rise of an Empire, it covers a lot more historical events compared to the first movie. Um, yeah, they said 300 covered Thermopylae. 300 Rise of an Empire covers... I mean, it mentions the first invasion of Greece by Persia, it mentions Thermopylae, and it mentions um, a battle that took place at the same time as Thermopylae, which was the Battle of uh, Artemisia. And then it, it goes a little bit forward toward the ba to the Battle of Salamis, so, yeah, this this covers a lot more ground, and um, I'm going to launch into a, a little mini movie review. Not really a proper review, but a little review. So, yeah, as I said, this, this covers a lot more ground than Thermopylae. There's a lot more to cover. So, I think one of the problems of this movie is that it tries to cover too much ground. Um... Yeah, the first movie, it only covered one event, and I think in that regard it had the advantage that it didn't have to jump all over the place, you know, talking about this and talking about that, and at the same time sacrificing battle details. Because in 300 Rise of an Empire, some of the battle scenes are a little bit, uh, wait, we say cursory or very, very quick, um, not very much explanation behind the battles. Um, I'll talk about the actual reasons behind the battles later on when I talk about the historical events. Um, but, this movie, every time I start a video, there's always someone texting me. That's fine. It's probably a girl, because I was texting somebody earlier. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, the movie. The the main actors, let's see, I, I have to look up their names again. Well, well, first off, the director was Noah Murrow. And I'm not really familiar with his works as a director. I can look it up really quick on IMDb, though. He directed Smart People. That was 2008. And he directed this little TV short called HBO Imagine. And that seems to be his only director credits. But when you watch this movie, you're, you're not going to notice, you know, too many weaknesses as a director. Because everything is pretty awesome about it, for the most part. Yeah, I like this movie. So, yeah... The main actors are Sullivan Stapleton, and he was in um, in Gangster Squad, which I haven't seen yet. But he plays the Athenian hero Themistocles, and he is the main the main character in this movie for the good guys. For the bad guys, you still have Xerxes, and uh, he still act he still um, the actor is still oh my gosh I can't remember his name. His name is Rodrigo Santoro. But he's not the main bad guy. The main bad guy in this movie is actually a girl, and it's Ava Green. She's that really uh, gorgeous actress from Kingdom of Heaven. In this movie, she plays Artemisia, and uh, she was... I guess you can say she's ethnically Greek. She had some Greek blood in her. Um, but she is an ally of Xerxes, and in this movie, she is commanding the uh, the Persian fleet against against the, the Greeks under uh, under Themistocles. So uh, that's what the the movie is basically about. It's about the uh, the Greek fleet led by Themistocles taking on this Persian fleet led by by Artemisia. So the acting is awesome. Who is that? Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting getting a little confused here. Um, yeah, if you liked Gerard Butler as Leonidas in the first movie because he was charismatic, um, tough. You know, he he was your your tough guy. He was brave. Oh my gosh. He was very charismatic. If you like that aspect of uh, Gerard Butler as Leonidas, then you're going to like Sullivan Stapleton as Themistocles because he's equally charismatic. He's very brave. Um, 
he's he's very, he's pretty witty too. Like the dialogue they give him, it's 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 intelligent, and it makes him look to be you know like an Athenian badass version of of the Spartan Leonidas. And uh, as a bad guy, Ava Green is awesome. That bad guy being a bad girl, because uh, they explain her back history, which by the way is completely embellished, historically speaking. But they they give her motive to be attacking, uh, you know, to be leading this Persian fleet against the Greeks, and they give her motive for the way she acts, and uh, they don't really, I mean, they kind of hammer up, but not, not too much. You, you know, not to the point of being unwatchable. They make it just right. Ava Green's a great actress. Like, she's, she's sexy, she's gorgeous, and uh, I can see myself being led, okay, hold on. I can see myself being led by, by this person. Okay. So yeah, the acting is uniformly awesome, and as for the action scenes, if you watch the first 300 movie, you know exactly what to expect. You're going to see a lot of CGI, CGI blood flying all over the place, limbs being hacked off, and because this movie is in 3D, you're going to see blood flying at the screen, you know, hands going here and there, heads being lopped off. It's pretty awesome. Um, pretty violent, though, so if, you have, uh, if you're under the age, you might want to... Yeah, you have to get parents' permission to watch this movie. What, what's the rating of this movie? I it is rated. Oh my gosh, it's hard to find. I'm assuming it's rated R though. But that's besides. Yeah, it's rated R for strong, sustained sequences of stylized bloody violence throughout. A sex scene, nudity, and some language. There is some some strong language. There is a sex scene between uh, Themistocles and. <laughs> and Artemisia, which was completely embellished as well. And very stylized blood sequences. Yeah, I gotta say, yeah, the battle sequences are not shown, you know, accurately. Not the way they should have been shown. But if you like 300, you're gonna like this kind of action because it's very over-the-top. Um, very bloody. And the sword play is awesome. Like, you're gonna see... Uh, Themistocles, like, taking on three Persians at once by himself. Like, he'll be taking on a Persian in the front, at the same time protecting himself from the rear with the shield, and there's arrows still flying at him at the same time. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome to watch this guy, like, go. It's like watching it's, it's like watching a, a uh, you know, a, uh, a version of Jet Li set in ancient times, just taking on all these guys at once. It's, it's pretty, pretty epic. Um, and also, like, the, these these warships they move way too fast they maneuver way too quickly, and yeah everything's just completely unreal about it. But it gives it this really epic feel to it, very mythic, a very mythic feel to it. Um, so yeah, in in short, as a movie, I loved this movie. I'm one of those people who can see all the inaccuracies of a movie, all of the um, like plot holes and whatnot. But as an art piece, this movie is it's very stylized, and it's very artistically done, and it's very beautiful to watch. And the acting is awesome, especially by the, by the two leads, uh, Ava Green and Sullivan Stapleton. So, let's go ahead and launch into the historical inaccuracies of this movie. So, uh, first off, the battle, I mean, the movie starts off with a prologue talking about the first invasion of, of Greece. Um, they highlight this invasion by talking about the Battle of Marathon, in which the Athenians launched launched this uh, attack at the Persians at the beach of Marathon. Um, I think, in essence, it it covered the spirit of that battle. Like it it showed the Greeks charging at these Persians, but uh, what they didn't show was that the Persians actually held their ground and they actually almost enveloped the Greeks as they tried to you know launch this. Surprise charge on them. Uh, yeah, but but they didn't show the Persians actually holding their ground for a bit. They just had them getting hacked down, panicking and running away. Um, but yeah, the first really big um, historical inaccuracy. I, I wrote some some night some notes down. Themistocles, he's the hero of this movie. He's the main actor in this movie. But they they called this guy the hero of Marathon. And I was doing some research. Oh, by the way. I'm using these books as my historical sources. I have Sparta's Kings by John Carr. 
Um, Warfare in the Classical World by John Wary, the illustrated edition. And then uh, Battles of the Ancient World, this book. So, out of the way. Themistocles, was he the hero of Marathons? I don't think so. It's said that he was one. He might have been one of the ten generals elected to lead the Athenian army at Marathons. Yeah, the way this, this was fought... I mean, the way that they used to fight, they would have, like, ten generals. On each given day, one general would be leading the army. But at that battle, there were ten generals. He might have been one of them. But every one of those commanders, they deferred military decisions to this guy called Miltiades. And so, if anything, it was Miltiades who was the hero of Marathon. He is the one who prescribed that the Greeks attack the Persians instead of waiting for them to come to them. So, if, if there was a hero of of Marathon, it would have been Miltiades, not Themistocles. Um, there's really not much said about Themistocles at this battle, except that he might have been present, and he, he might have been one of the Ten Generals, certainly not the hero of Marathon. And they also show the first uh, Persian king, uh, Darius, that's Xerxes' father, they show him being killed at Marathon by Themistocles, which is completely inaccurate. Uh, Darius was not even at this battle. It was actually... Uh, the Persian army was led by, uh, where well, the Persian expeditionary force was led by Datus, and Darius was not killed at this battle. In fact, he he wasn't even in Greece. I don't think so. I mean, the point is, he wasn't killed at this battle by Themistocles. That's just completely embellished. Not sure why they why they showed that, um, but they said it was based on a comic book. So who knows? And what else? I think I had a, I think I had another uh, historical thing to show for the marathon. Nope. All right, so. The next thing was, um, Themistocles, that's the hero of this, the, the Athenian hero of this movie. He's trying to lobby support from the Spartans to, uh, to join a united Greece against Persia. Well, as you guys know, Leonidas already led the, the Spartans at Thermopylae. Like, the Spartans already agreed to fight, you know, with, with the, uh, the Athenians. The reason why they sent so few troops to Thermopylae is because they were holding a religious celebration. But, but the Spartans, they understood how grave the situation was, so Leonidas himself led 300 Spartans along with about six to 7,000 other Greeks against the Persians at Thermopylae. So the Spartans understood the danger, and they were totally in support of fighting the Persians, but they just could not send a full army yet at Thermopylae. So Themistocles going to Sparta... Like, he, he visits them twice, looking for support. He didn't really need to do that. They were already in support of this war. And um, in the movie, they have Queen Gorgo uh, um, played again by Lena Headey. She was in the first movie. She was King, Leonid King, King Leonidas' wife. They have her very reluctant to to fight against the Persians. Um, but that that's completely untrue. They were already in support of this. So, let's talk about the next person. Artemisia, that was the, the, the main bad girl in this movie. Uh, she was actually a queen of Korea, or not Korea, but Korea. I don't know how you pronounce that. But she was basically an ally of, of Darius, and she was a, you know, Greek by blood. And uh, as you guys know, the Persians were this, they were a very uh, cosmopolitan empire. Um, their fleet at, at uh, Salamis and, um, and Artemisia, Artemisium, it, it was composed of, of Greek ships, the Ionian Greeks, uh, Phoenician ships, Egyptian ships, like it was a very uh, cosmopolitan force, so it it makes sense that Artemidia was not Persian by blood. And let's see here, something to point out: she, historically, she actually uh, warned Darius or Xerxes about fighting the Greeks at sea. She said it wasn't worth the risk because they already had this overwhelming edge on land, like in terms of numbers. So she questioned the value of, of fighting the Greeks at sea where it was just a risk. And in the movie, she is like, she is like this, this uh, bull. She's like, man, let's fight these Greeks at sea. I want you to watch me bury these Greeks at sea, destroy every one of them at sea. But yeah, historically speaking, like, there are, I think it was Herodotus who quoted her as saying that she was really, like, she didn't really want to fight the Greeks at sea. And she even told Xerxes that. But uh, Xerxes deferred to the uh, majority of his commanders who, uh, who um, promoted a multi-pronged attack on Greece by land and sea. I mean, in retrospect, that sounds more, more safe. 
But that said, that's not Artemisia's character. She did not want to fight these Greeks at sea, but she eventually did agree to do it, and she was leading a portion of the fleet. Um, speaking of Artemisia, she did not die at the Battle of Salamis, as shown in the movie. She died much later on. And, uh, what else? Oh yeah, here's a detail that they left out. Historically speaking, she, at this battle, she was in such a panic at the Battle of Salamis that she turned around, she turned her ship around, and started to ram her own ships. And in doing so, the Greeks thought that, Artem that Artemisia was one of their own Greek ships fighting for them, so, so, they, so they, they let her go away. They let her get away. And that, I think that's a, de a detail that, that would have been even better in the movie if, had they shown it. Um, Battle of Artemisia, they didn't really explain. This is the problem with the movie. They didn't explain exactly why they were there. The Greeks were at Artemisia because they were protecting the flanks of Thermopylae. You know, in the first movie, Gerard Butler was Leonidas. He was fighting at Thermopylae. In order to protect the rear of this, uh, of this pass, they had to hold the sea at Artemisia to prevent the Persians from coming around. Um, that's why when the Greeks under Leonidas did lose at Thermopylae, that's why the Greeks left at, at Artemis, because there was no more at Artemisi Artemisium. Blah, 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 blah. Let me backtrack and say that again. <laughs> yeah, the, um, Themistocles was holding Artemisium to protect the flanks of Leonidas at Thermopylae. So when the, the Greeks lost at Thermopylae, it no longer made any sense to uh, to be stationed at Artemisium because they were taking all these losses at sea from the Persians, and the only reason why they were there was to protect their flanks. <laughs> I don't know why I made it so hard the first time I said that. Um, something else that needs to be said. Um, there were actually two commanders of the Greek fleet, um, and that was one was Themistocles, but the the actual commander was a Spartan by the name of Eurybiades. And the reason why they put Eurybiades in charge was because a lot of the Peloponnesian Greeks, they didn't really trust the Athenians because the Athenian power was actually growing at this time. So, so they put a Spartan in command. But what ended up happening was uh, Eurybiades, he usually deferred judgment to uh, Themistocles, who was a better uh, naval tactician. That said, they, they still were at odds with each other because they did not agree on, on naval strategy. But ultimately, Themistocles was the brains behind the, the naval aspect. So what else? Battle of Salamis. In the movie, they showed the Battle of Salamis being fought in this open sea. You know, the, the Greeks were forming this big uh, circle to give themselves all-around protection against the Persians who were surrounding them. Um, in the actual battle, the Greeks fought in a narrow strait, Battle of Salamis. And it's kind of like how the Spartans fought at Thermopylae, it was a narrow pass. Well, at the Battle of Salamis, the Greeks also fought at a very narrow strait, so the Persians couldn't, you know, readily outflank them. You know, by by fighting at the strait, it negated the large numbers of the Persians. And there was a little detail where they talk about the Persian ships being heavier than the the Greek ships. In reality, it was actually the other way around. The Greek ships, led by Themistocles and Eurybiades. They were actually heavier than the Persian ships, and they were actually uh, the 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 crew of these Greek ships were not as experienced as the Persian the Persian navy. So um, that's something that they left out of the movie. And yeah, the, there's they're not really sure why the Greek ships were heavier. Um, some people were were guessing that that the, these Greek ships were packed, like they were overpacked with uh, hoplites or with um with like heavier armed. Uh, Greek soldiers. That's why they might have been heavier. Or it might have been the way they were constructed. But the, the, both Persians and the Greeks were using triremes at this time. And, uh... Yeah, so... What they said about Greek ships being lighter, that's not true. And... I think those are the only details I wanted to discuss, really. I think so. Yeah. In the movie, they, uh... Oh, yeah, there, there's some more st stuff, actually. In the movie, they have the Spartans coming at the last second, saving the Athenian ships at Salamis. That's completely untrue. The Spartans were already part of the Greek fleet, and there weren't many Spartan ships to begin with. I think there were about... Out of 300-plus ships, the Spartans only composed about 15 or 16 of those of, the, of those ships. So they, they weren't really 
game changers. I'm not sure why they made the Spartans the heroes of Salamis. That was completely untrue. If there was a hero of Salamis, it would have been the Athenians. The Athenians provided about 150 ships. I mean, they're all heroes, but the game changers would have been the Athenians. And if you were to call Themistocles a hero, his shining light would have been at uh, at Salamis, not Marathon, as the movie uh, as the movie shows. And and they also left out a Spartan hero, Eurybiades. He was the uh, he was the Spartan commander of the, the the Greek fleet. But as I said, yeah, this is based on a comic book, which in turn was based on a historical event. So you're gonna have a lot of discrepancies. And as I said. Yeah, despite all of these historical inaccuracies, despite the unrealistic combat depicted in the movie, despite all of that, this movie was awesome because the acting was awesome. The story was very well told. The visuals were beautiful. Um, if there were any weaknesses in the movie, it would probably be some of the... probably in the middle of the movie when they're showing the, the, the naval battle because a lot of the time it felt like they were, they were fast-forwarding past all the explanations for the naval battles and it wasn't making much sense. Like you didn't really get a, uh, you didn't really understand the logic behind what was happening in these naval battles. It was just happening. Like these Persians were coming and the Greeks were fighting back. They weren't explaining, you know, the consequences of these actions. They weren't explaining why it was happening. Um, it just seemed to happen. But that's fine. It was it was a great movie overall. Acting was awesome. And. Uh, that's all I want to say. Overall, I loved this movie. I highly recommend it. Um, you should also you, see, you should also watch Pompeii if you if you like uh, movies set in ancient times because they're both out right now. I'm not sure how much longer Pompeii is going to be in theaters, but it's been out for a few weeks now, and it's probably not very successful. As a as a movie goer, I love the movie though, and as, as a lover of seeing antiquity on the screen, I loved Pompeii, and I love 300: Rise of an Empire. It's great to see uh, naval warfare. Even in this unrealistic um, approach, it's still great to see it. I think the only time I, the only other time I've seen naval warfare, like this much naval warfare in a movie, uh, let's see Ben Hur was Charlton Heston. Um, can't think of anything else really. I'm sure there are, but this movie focuses entirely on on the naval aspect of ancient warfare. So that said, it's it's awesome. You got to see uh, Themistocles as a hero. He, he's a great actor, uh, Sullivan Stapleton. And if you want to see a hot actress as a villain, Ava Green, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, what do you guys think of this movie? Are you going to watch it? And secondly, or lastly, I want to say I'm wearing these headsets. I'm wearing this headset because I'm going to dub my voice. I'm, I'm recording all the audio with, um, with uh, Audacity. Audacity. I just want to... I want to see if, it, if it's better to hear myself with uh, Audacity as opposed to you know, the, the in microphone, the, the built-in microphone of my camera. Um, that's it. Leave your thoughts. Did you like this movie? Bye.